This video was brought to you by Stoinberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Biel. Yo, what's up? We are now back at Elbilmec in Lierskogen. And yes, we are doing it. We're going to try to fix the battery pack of the leaf. So uh, here we have uh, Valdemar as last time. And then, uh, Valdemar, you've been working on the leaf a little bit. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So a, a little recap here. Uh, this leaf, we found that, to, that it had uh, somewhat significant degradation. Uh, it's supposed to be, maybe on this age, it's supposed to be roughly 16 kilowatt hour. I mean, we saw roughly 12 something kilowatt hour. So that's a bit low. Yep. But you have found the, the root to the cause, uh, root to the cause, or yeah. Yeah, I can, I, can, I can show you on the on the on the on the pictures. Yeah, but before we do that, let me just since we have the leaf up here, let's see now. So um, this is the first time I've seen it under here. So the battery pack has been taken out, and then uh, yeah, the battery pack was here, and this is not sure what to, sh to, to show you guys, but. Look here, you know, I got, you know, when I saw this, I got some idea, what am I? Is, can you guys figure out a way to put, the, put, put in some fans here, make it active cooling? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Is, is it possible? They drill some holes, maybe like an inlet and then an outlet or something. Yeah, I think so. We can, uh, we can build some, some fans to, to cool the battery pack. It would be interesting to see how efficient it will be. <laughs> <laughs> but also, of course, it's a matter of cost because uh, it takes actually a lot of time to take out the battery pack. So it, it should be some kind of quick fix, like drill it from above if it's possible and then mount some, mount some yeah, fans and then connect to 12 volt or something. Uh, maybe just a manual switch would work, actually. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. <laughs> you can try to look at this possibility <laughs> for but, fun. Yeah. Well, okay. Anyway, so, and then here, all right. Uh, here is the goodie. So over here we have the leaf battery pack and uh, maybe we should just dive into it. What was the problem? Where do you want to start? Uh, we can uh, start here that... Uh, let me see, where are those papers? There were some other papers. Oh, here, here, yeah. this one, right? Was it this one? Yeah, so we've done a test with the uh, um, Nissan uh, uh, Leaf Spy. And we found that, at, uh, let me see, even at 9.9 uh, 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 state of health, uh, state of charge, the cell number one is uh, very, very weak. Oh, I never noticed that. Mm. Oh, this is cells until 96. Uh, wait a moment. I think I took the wrong papers. Sorry. Well, you have so many of these screenshots. Yeah, screenshots. I, I mixed it up. This is the right. Uh, this is 24 hour, 24 kilowatt hour uh, battery state of health was 64.48 and uh, the weak cell number one at 3% uh, of state of charge. Of course state of charge is very low at this point so you normally you don't drive it so often uh, to so low um, uh, percentage but uh, for testing purposes for us it's very easy then to, to identify which uh, cell is the or cells are uh, bad. So mm. In this case, the number one is, is very... Uh, and what was the other one we saw it earlier? Is that another car? Uh, let me see if it's the same yeah, car. It's the same, uh, yeah, same it's actually bin. the same okay, car. Just a different representation. Yes, different representation. Sta different state of charge. Yeah, the okay. VIN number is the same, yes. Yeah. And the kilometers are the same, yeah. Oh, okay. So it's the same. But you see, now I start realizing that um, the car wants to protect the, every cell. And if one cell is weak, then it needs to cut off and say, okay, that's the end. But then all the other cells are like, hey, we are good. We can yeah. go more. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so which means that that's the weak link. So if you change that one, it might solve the problem. Yeah, <clears throat> I think it's very interesting to see uh, for us and to, to viewers how much effect, how much bigger state of health will become if we change just one cell. Yeah. Hmm. But okay, by the way, uh, so before that one, uh, you also talked to a friend who had another crazy idea. <laughs> yeah, uh, I talked to a friend and he had a very crazy idea. Uh, I think he tried on his car, but uh, I'm not sure if we can do it uh, in Norway uh, because it's, I think it's dangerous. Uh, it can be dangerous in some cases, but he talks about um, 
cutting off uh, temperature and sensors and unlock the temperature to the 10 degrees oh, wait, for, wait, for all the time. Let me uh, interrupt a little bit. So is, are these the temp sensors? I heard that it was four. Yeah, so we have one, uh, one here. Oh, oh that's what they, okay, where are they located, by the way? Uh, this is, is on, uh -huh. on cell number one. Uh, I don't know which cell number is. Uh, and this is the other one? Or? Yes, yes, you're right. And then we have uh, one here, mm -hmm. and then we have one on another side. Uh, let me see, where's the last one? Here? Yes, over there. Okay. Also, this is, by the way, this is the, the leaf budget pack. So it, it consists of, um, well, it's this box, but one box contains two cells. Yes. So I counted 48 of these boxes and 96 cells. Yeah, we can see also here. Um, let me see where I've seen it. That's uh, 48 modules in total. Ah, okay. Ah, modules. And then this is a generic uh, diagnostic tool yeah. for any battery pack. Uh, I don't know if it works on all the battery packs, but um, it works on Leaf, on Tesla, on Kia. I don't remember if we tested it on, uh, on others. No, it's pretty cool. It's, you can see lots of information here. You can see you connect it via... So you take, I don't know, some plugs here, and then you connect it via yeah. some interface. Yeah, you connect it right to the, to the battery, so you don't need to, to have it connected uh, to the car. And then it goes via some Bluetooth or something like this. Yeah. Mm. Oh, interesting. But yeah, so how you see the Leaf uh, battery, this is the first time I've seen it. I was like, first thing that struck me, like, hey, why is there so much gap between here? <laughs> and I was wondering, what's going on in the, in the battery when it gets really hot? Well, and I was also looking for, wait, I heard that there's, there's some kind of passive cooling. So I was looking for some kind of air channel that passes through here as the car drives, but seems like there is no passive cooling here. I think that uh, the cooling through the maybe battery case, this is maybe called the, the, the passive cooling. So the batteries, battery cells which are uh, located here and here, I think they are cooled best, but uh, I think that the cells are in, which are in the middle uh, gets uh, very, very poor cooling. Mm. And yeah. um, my experience says that uh, those cells in the middle get uh, broken or uh, lose power much, much uh, quicker and much more often than the cells in other places of the battery. Okay. Well, yeah, but that was just a little uh, side step. But okay, back to the point again, that hack you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he says that if we take out um, temperature sensors and lock the temperature to 10 degrees, so we can use the, the battery, uh, let's say, we have wider uh, capacity on, on the battery. I mean... Well, uh, well you, you mentioned, by the way, uh, when I, we talked earlier, that uh, what, what you do is you put the resistor there instead, right? To, yeah. To so fool it to be 10 degrees so fixed. To, so to cheat uh, the BMS, uh, yeah, you have to use uh, res resistors. But, uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if this is a good idea and uh, I don't uh, recommend uh, to do it. But it, <laughs> it was interesting to talk with uh, and discuss with Bjorn what, what could happen. Yeah, if I guess if so. you... Wait, so what, what is the point? Is that when you fool the system that it's 10 degrees and then you kind of run it... Uh, then we have to reset the state of health to, to original to 100%. So when the temperature is not changing, then the BMS is not recalculated state of health. So it gives a possibility to charge and discharge the battery uh, for a wider range. Whoa, hmm. but that means that, uh, well, you, you mean, does it charge to 4.2 volts then at 100%? Uh, I'm not sure how, how, how much it will go, but- Yeah, for, on for a fresh battery, it should be roughly there. Yeah, it can be that it will go full uh, up to 4.2. Okay, I don't know how good of an idea this is. Yeah. It's, it's as if you are sick and you take some pain kills and keep running. And then, okay, but that means that by doing this, the YOLO trick here, you might kind of run the battery great for a couple of years. Yeah, so my friend says that he, if you have a very bad battery, uh, that you, like I say, 
there is no hope to, to fix it. So you can uh, try to do this trick and just drive it back the battery completely to the end. <laughs> After two years, you have to uh, deliver to battery return somewhere. Yeah. <laughs> okay. But um, yeah, I, I think we will not go for this solution. No. No, okay, no. and also, uh, yeah, we'll come back to why also it not, not, doesn't make sense for this case. But here, by the way, we have uh, some, well, not new cells, but uh, second-hand cells. Yeah. yeah. Or modules, rather. So this is actually one module. Right? Yeah, this is uh, one module, and uh, this is not new. Um, by the way, new cells uh, would not work good on the old battery pack. Because it's going to be too big difference on uh, on uh, capacity. First of all, internal resistance. So, so the battery pack will not uh, function optimal. So, if you're replacing cells, you need to find the uh, used cells which are driven up approximately same uh, kilometers and uh, have approximately same capacity as uh, rest of the of the cells. Interesting. So. Um uh, can we look at the the work uh, thing here? So what, what we want to well, know now is the cost. How much would it cost to replace one cell or uh, one module actually? So we're calculating that to replace uh, one cell uh, is going to cost uh, twelve thousand five hundred. Nook, and that is roughly a little bit over one thousand euros. Yeah, one thousand to yeah maybe one thousand now by today's. Uh, yeah, and then I see that uh, the majority of the cost here is actually work labor. Hmm. Uh, yeah, and then the cell, uh, so, uh, yeah, okay, so 1800, uh, is that before VAT? Yes, before VAT. Okay, so roughly 2000 nook for the cell, oh sorry, the, the module. Mm. Well actually when it says battery cell, it's actually two cells. Right? Yes, it's yeah. two cells, one mod battery module, yes, that's correct. So you see here that here the cost is kind of expensive for the car, but just to show that the majority here is, is for taking out the battery cell and I mean sorry taking out the battery pack and, and then putting it back again. Mm -hmm. So if you would do that hack, you will also have to lower everything and take out this one. Yeah. So the the price for that uh, that kind of YOLO hack would probably be ten thousand at least. Yeah, approximately that. Yeah. Mm. So then I guess it makes sense if many, many cells here are broken. Because then the price for the cells will be high. So yeah. then you just YOLO it and yeah, live your life. <laughs> yeah, but uh, you, uh, as we talked, maybe you have to drive with the fire uh, extinguisher. Yeah. <laughs> in some cases, it gets too hot inside and the uh, system does not recognize it. Yeah. So it's really dangerous and we don't recommend to do this. <laughs> and we also check another thing, by the way. If you buy a second-hand battery pack from a salvage car, uh, it's roughly 20,000 nook or 2,000 euros. Yeah. But then each cell, or I'm sorry, each module will then cost roughly 400 ish. Four, yeah, 400 nook only. Yeah, this is, uh, this, this is, this is correct. So, so yeah. why, why are these so expensive then? <laughs> it's a uh, seller price. You know, oh. the, the people are earning money, they buy the battery pack, uh, splitting them in modules and, and uh, resell to. Uh, to other people and to workshops as we. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's cheaper to buy the complete pack and maybe split with a friend or friends or somebody <laughs> if you have many cells which are broken. All right, so, um, so which, what we gonna, are we gonna try to replace them then? Yeah, yeah. Uh, we're gonna re try to replace the battery cell number one and uh, it's gonna be very interesting to see how much or how better capacity is going to be uh, replacing just one battery cell. So as we know before, it was missing uh, four uh, bricks mm -hmm. on, the, on the dashboard. Yeah, dots. Yeah. Dots, yeah. So after replacing uh, one cell, we will reset state of health to 100%. So all the 12 bars will be back on the place. And after uh, test drive, uh, we will see it how will, down it will go. Oh, it will automatically calibrate again, right? Yeah. Ah, I mm. see. Yeah. Yeah. Um, interesting. Yeah, so I guess we have to come back here once you have done the repair then. Yeah. But, um, uh, uh, by the way, some more uh, leaf. Uh, the, there is so much knowledge about leaf here. Um, after the, the first video, lots of people commented that, you know, this leaf here uh, is the first generation. It, it was supposed to be 
I mean, it was registered in 2013, but it is actually a 2012 leaf. So many people also comment on this that, uh, you know, when you're looking for a secondhand leaf, you can, if you go to the trunk and you see this big chunk here, this is actually the onboard charger. Yes. And it's only, wait, how? And it's only 3.3 kilowatt. Yeah. How, why is it so big? <laughs> Do you have any, have you seen inside this before? Yes. Uh, I cannot explain why it's so big, but, uh, but yes, this is true. 2012 model, it's a 3.3 charger. And uh, from 2013, you have uh, OBC in the front of the car, and then you have a 3.3 or 6.6 .6 kilowatt uh, onboard charger. So that means that actually, if, if you are just like a regular consumer uh, and you're looking for a leaf, even though it says 2013, you can just open the trunk and see if you have this big thing here. Mm -hmm. If it's not there, then it means it's actually the, the new version. Yes. Right? And the other things you can identify with the new one. This is the old one, by the way. Is that the new version? I mean, the old one has white, white-ish seats. I mean, they used to be white. <laughs> and also, so the, the new version has black seats or black interior. Is it? Yeah. Then you can choose with like skin interior or, uh, yeah. But, but but does it mean that this this white bright interior only exists in the old one? Yes. Uh huh. And the last thing in here, at least, you see that it has this electron. Oh, wait, this uh, this uh, what do you call it? Uh, park brake. Park brake switch. Uh huh. On uh, on uh, 2013 model, we have uh, uh, foot brake. Okay, instead foot of that one. Parking brake. Yes. So it means that that switch is gone in the new one. Yes, it's uh -huh. gone. Uh, and then one last thing you can also check, which is actually important for Norwegians, is that under the hood, uh, this one does not have heat pump, so it's only PTC. Yes, only PTC uh, water uh, heater. And on 2013 model, you get uh, warmer pump with uh, like mm -hmm. ele electric heater. So actually, <laughs> many, many things uh, about this one here. I mean, it just screams, don't buy it. Uh, you you kind of need to identify and figure out whether it's worth it to buy it or not. But another thing I will show you, by the way, if you look here, this is the battery case, and there's a part number on the battery case here. And what you have to look for the, is the, the last letter. So if it's A, A is the, um, the, the, the first generation, uh, which is the 2012. And then B and C, or whatever, was the next generation, which has actually better battery. And then if it says a three there, or an E, or whatever I think it was, then it's the Lizard battery, which is a lot better. So when you see the A there, that also, well, it's kind of hard to figure. Now, you, normally you can't see this one because it would be in the inside of the car, right? No, uh, it's not going to be visible. Yeah, OK. Yeah. You, but uh, at least now, if you see it here, the A battery, is also the, the worst one. Because uh, some people say that the next generation, the B and C battery, they have slightly different chemistry. And I guess less cells will go bad. <laughs> yes, from 2013, they, they changed something in the, in the cells uh, chemistry, as you say. So the, the battery uh, takes uh, heat much better. So they, they can survive in more warm environment. Hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah, what we have found out so far is that uh, if you're looking for a car like this, then stay away from this car. But we are kind of gone deep already, so we just have to finish this. this is th th I think that's the plan now. We're gonna, yeah, um, yeah, Valdemar, what do we do now? We have, uh, we have dug ourselves so deep now, and we want to know how much capacity can we recover. So, yeah, uh, we will replace one cell, uh, reset the state of health. Uh, and we will make the car ready for you to take on the test drive and see what's the actual uh, range and how much uh, battery capacity we were able to build back by replacing just one cell. I can't wait to see that. Like, how much is it? Yeah. Well, can we, can we recover four kilowatt hour? It sounds crazy, but, but I mean, the, the way it works is that we just fix the, the, the weak link and then suddenly, yeah, it'll be better, hopefully. Hopefully. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's going to be it. Uh, follow video coming soon. This is super interesting for me. And we have so many leaves out, uh, the old leaves out on the road now. So it's still very interesting, uh, I think for me and for many other people who might consider buying a secondhand leaf. And if they get stuck with one that they had for a long time, 
maybe it's not too late, you can recover it. Or you can go crazy and then uh, go for that, you know, insert the, the steroid or the painkiller and then run for two more years. <laughs> okay, but yeah, so uh, more episodes coming up from El Bilmec. So that's going to be it for now. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.